right yeah. so, so this group would not exist if Antifa wasn't trying to shout people down and trying to um, uh, take them out. I don't think so. I think you just they'd just be at a bar like the Elks Lodge. You, they wouldn't be coming out to defend people. But more importantly, the, the way I feel personally is America is the greatest country on earth because it's not about identity politics, because it's not about your accent like it is in Britain or, or where you come from. It's about meritocracy. You come here, you bust your ass, you at least appreciate your Christian values. You can be an atheist, but you have to understand that that is the backbone of the country. And as long as you're, you're part of us, you're in. We don't care if you're from Uganda, Singapore, you bust your ass, you're into American values, you're in. And there's not a lot of places like that in the world. It's, it's very rare to have that total lack of classism and that admiration for independence and liberty and hard work. And we got there through a horrible list of ups and downs and and rights and wrongs and trying to correct things. We had slavery. Our treatment of the Indians was not uh, was not what you'd expect for someone to whom the Sermon on the Mount was divine command, as Buchanan says. But we, we, we got here all together through all this mess and all this suffering. And here we are in the freest country of the world, and we get people complaining, saying America was never great. And and that's what pisses me off. And it's ironic that we, we get called white supremacists because... The reason we love America is it doesn't bother with all of that crap. Gavin, we had this ad for a long time. I think the media basically just said Antifa was, it, they didn't exist. They ignored them completely. And as the violence has escalated, their new tactic seems to be, well, yes, there's violence, but it's, it's the Proud Boys' fault or it's, it's the right wing's fault. Have you noticed, or they're just exercising, my favorite is, they're just exercising their First Amendment right of uh, assembly and petition, yeah, of course. Of course. I'm curious, Gavin, if you've detected a difference recently um, in the approach from the media as is trying to make your group the real uh, villain. The, the real villain of this, because I mean, I, I they were, you know, there was a tweet, a tweet string going on about the alleged violence by Proud Boys members, and it was retweeted by people like Maggie Haberman, like big time reporters were going after this. You've become, I think, a central target in this. Is that? Do you feel that? Definitely. I think the the DNC put their uh, hate is not hate has no home here. That's the only thing they have to say. America, and it's an idiotic thing to say. That's like saying we we are sick of albino violence. Like they just chose this really weird concept, these evil Nazis, and they said we're going to rid America of the Klan and Nazis. Now there are none, so they go, uh oh, uh, we got to expand the net here. So now anyone who disagrees with them is part of this evil hate they have to stop. And I unfortunately have fallen into that that definition, and it's it's. <laughs> It's amazing that Antifa and the media and the DNC are all in cahoots. Like Cuomo was saying, hate is, is like a, a match, and you put it on dry dry grass, and then the wind just takes it. I think the match is Antifa, the wind is the media, and the DNC are starting fires. I, don't, I, I, I have to tell you, I have a hard time.